Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, digital infrastructure, and the networks within. I'm Emily Scherer for JSA, and I am joined here today by Josh Snowhorn. He is the CEO of Quantum Loophole. They are a data center developer specializing in power, connectivity, and water challenges for new data center builds. So Josh, thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um, absolutely. So for our viewers who are unfamiliar with Quantum Loophole, what should they know about you and your offerings? So we have the largest master plan data center community in the world. It's actually 2,164 acres, about three and a half square miles in scale. We're located 20 miles north of Equinix Ashburn. It's the biggest data center campus in the world. Um, most amount of power ever delivered, two and a half gigawatts. So it's actually the single biggest power site for any industry in North America, the single biggest location. And we build a fiber ring that links our campus between Ashburn and our site can hold 235,000 strands of fiber, and that as well is the biggest fiber ring ever constructed. Wow, that's amazing. And Ashburn's such a big market, a lot going on right there with power right now, so a big conversation. They have yeah. no power and we have it, yeah, so it's exactly. a good situation. Okay, perfect, yeah. perfect. Um, one of the major challenges is power, like we just said. So what are some of the construction trends that you're seeing in regard to power supply and power density? And what are the challenges facing new data centers in that regard? Uh, in general, everybody has a shortage of power right now, and it, it starts out with transmission. If you can't get core transmission delivered to a site to even distribute it and step it down to all of your customers and you've got a problem. In our case, we have 2,500 megawatts of power, which is enough to power a major city um, of, of like a million people. I mean, it's really crazy scale. But we, we were lucky in that our site is a former Alcoa aluminum smelter. So smelting takes a massive amount of electricity. The transmission scale power lines were already there. We're just tapping in and taking advantage of that. So the challenges really get to, once you get beyond the grid and, and get to peak grid, how are you actually going to be able to power it later on? Is it going to be batteries and solar and wind? Well, that's not what we call firm power. It's not 24-7. So it's going to take things like maybe creative hydrogen or natural gas turbines, renewable natural gas, and God help us nuclear, which everybody's talking about a lot. So we can see that happening as well. Maybe in your backyard, we'll put a reactor. It'll be yeah. nice for you. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, okay, and let's see, later today you're going to be speaking on a panel here at Metro Connect. So tell us a little bit about that session and what attendees can expect to learn. It's going to be a little bit testy. It's going to be talking about power and the future of it and where it's going to have to go to be able to scale up to need, you know, have a request. I'll give you an example. Like the state of Georgia in 100 years had 15 gigawatts, 15,000 megawatts of power for the whole state. It took 100 years to get there. They have 27 gigawatts of requests now for the next like four years. They, uh, it's impossible to fulfill. So that, that's the kind of problems we're going to talk about. Just the scale problem with all the coal shutting down everywhere. How are we going to take that up with new renewables or carbon-free power, which is nuclear? Yeah. So we'll see where that goes. But that'll that's all a decade away, too. So yeah, it'll be a while. Well, that sounds exciting. What time is that panel taking place today? Uh, two something in the afternoon. Somebody will tell me to go and I'll go. Two something, something like that. Look yeah. on your schedules. Try to catch it. That sounds like a good one. That's exciting. Um, and let's see here. I think I skipped something. We wanted to talk a little bit more about that master plan data center development that you had mentioned earlier. And that can be deployed at a gigawatt scale. How does that work? And how does it solve some of the power challenges that you were just mentioning? So, so we actually, we're actually multi-gigawatt. Um, but what, what it does, if you take a campus like ours, so we're over 2,000 acres, we actually are putting 600 acres into green space and conservation, which you would never see normally. Everybody usually builds every little inch of that. So think about it like a master plan housing community. It's really the best way to describe that. We parcelize the land and make take all the ideal parcels for data centers, sell that to clients to develop their own data centers, and we put in all the underground not fancy stuff, the poo water, the, you know, the sewage, the, the potable water, the, all the underground fiber, everything else, we get it all in place. So when they want to put in their data center, it's sort of an easy button. And we, we also pre-build the giant gigawatt scale substations to actually get the electricity to the site. So we're, by solving all that, it, it's sort of rapid deployment for the hyperscale industry to be able to deploy their infrastructure as they need it. Excellent. Great. Thanks for letting us know a little bit more about that. You're welcome. And for anybody who wants to know more about Quantum Loophole, where can they go to learn more? QuantumLoophole.com or just reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions. That's an easy one. Okay, great. Well, keep an eye out for Josh. Uh, a lot of great info here about power and data centers. Thank you for joining us on JSA TV. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. To our viewers, happy networking.